by the name of Kid Dynamite. Niggas don't even remember that nickname. I know you don't. That's how long I've been fucking with Mike Tyson. That's his nickname. I, I remember Iron Mike Tyson. That's, that's when he got popular. Mm. His original nickname was Kid Dynamite. I'm talking about 84, 85 shit. That's Kid Dynamite, bro. Okay. And this is this is what I'm saying. I respect Muhammad Ali. And you have to. Uh, yeah, of course. But Muhammad Ali did a lot of dancing and running. Now, don't, I don't want to take away from the fact that he was a very skilled fighter. Now, Muhammad Ali is probably, if we're just talking about boxing, Muhammad Ali may be a better boxer. But a fighter? <laughs> what? It's, whoa, it's whoa. a huge, yeah, I know what you mean. It's I know a what huge you mean. difference. It's a huge difference. But what were, their, what were their classifications of what they did? All right, let's, let's, let's okay, we're gonna, if we're going to look at it, let's look at, now, Muhammad Ali probably had, um, a greater rivalry than Mike Tyson did, and that's yeah, the only reason. Yeah, yeah, that's the only reason why you, why niggas are saying that he's the greatest, and then the fact that he won his title back multiple times, at least twice, three times was it three yeah. times? So that's what that's what motherfuckers is looking at. But when I'm talking about feared, and nobody wants to step in the ring with this man because you fuck around and get murdered with a punch, that's Iron Mike Tyson, bro. That's iron, but Mike. But here's the thing: is that now? Don't get me wrong. Tyson was a, a mean motherfucker. I was also, a Tyson fan. He's also day. a student of boxing. Student of uh, Gus. What's that? Gus Tomato. Yeah, Gus Tomato. Gus trained. Who's also connected to Muhammad Ali? Right. Gus was Gus was a hell of a trainer, and Tyson had a an aura and a whole. Just like Ali was psycho, you know, he, he was a uh, he tried to talk you out of the fight. Tyson with the him. look and the, yeah. you know, the sign of his theme music, all black. Mm -hmm. All that played like in the fear. Room, but none of that shit. So fear, you know, Ali's going to try to talk you out of the fight. He's going to get in your head and try to talk you out of it. Tyson's going to come and he's going to try to scare you to death. Make you think he'll do anything. He's going to tear your goddamn head off. But the thing of it is, just because... He doesn't get credit for that though, James. What? The fact that he would psychologically defeat his opponent before they even stepped into the ring. Like when he fought, um, what's my man's name? It's not Spinks. Uh, what's the brother? Buster or? No, nah, it wasn't. It, it's, this, is, this was. Uh, oh, was, uh, Rick Bo? No, nah, it was, it was, this was early on. And it, I can't remember if it was, if it wasn't Spinks. It, this the guy who, when, um, when Tyson came out, like, because he came out to that shit where it's not even music, it's just like drums, the black trunks. Lenny Lewis? Or? Mm -hmm. This is like in the night. I'm I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you what it is. But the nigga, psychologically, what he did to the dude, when they were in the dressing room, this guy's manager walked over to Tyson's dressing room and basically put on this show like, oh, I want, I want to see his, I want to see him get his hands taped, get his gloves taped up, which they are supposed to do that. Right. You are supposed to be able to do that. But when he did that, he made this big stink about it. And nigga Tyson was pacing back and forth in the room and punched through the wall. 
like, you know, hit the wall twice and plus do it. And the nigga that he was fighting was right next door and heard this shit. Yeah. And was no good. I mean, you can see the fear when they was walk when the nigga was walking into the ring. You can, and that's what I mean. That's real live warrior shit. That's that's, that's warrior shit. That's psychological shit, and that's Tyson doesn't get credit for necessarily having a brain. Ali gets all the credit because he did but all. But look at what he did. First of all, you got two. Let's just use George Foreman. Yeah. They fly to Zaire, Africa. Yeah. They're both black men. But Ali psychologically fools the whole country into thinking that George Foreman is an Uncle Tom. Which yeah. he helped himself out too by yeah. bringing that German Shepherd. And when he was waving that flag. Waving that flag. Yeah. All that clown shit. He don't, but Ali, boom, by yay. Ali, like Ali got this whole country behind him. And he's, he's putting it, he's telling Foreman that God told me that I'm going to win. Yeah. Like this is destiny. Like you got to go down. Like I'm, I'm God's son. I'm sitting here and whoop your ass basically. It's what Ali's putting in his head. Leo so psychologically, and you got all these people, and everything is looking like maybe it is God's son. Maybe it is meant for me. Like psychologically, he fucked George Foreman up. He did. And he, he did. pulled the rope, though. He stayed did. up against the rope, tired his big ass yeah. out. See, but Ali gets credit for all of that. He, hey, he, he's very well documented. He gets credit for all that. Tyson doesn't really get credit for that. Only thing he gets. He was an animal. He was a savage. <laughs> he was a savage. But the nigga played. All I'm saying is, he played. He played into that. He, he played into the fact of him being a savage. But a lot of it was true. He had fucking white tiger running around his house. I'm telling. That's why I call him. I'm telling you that nigga, tigers, monsters. You know what I'm saying? Shit that can murder you and kill. Yeah, he he's a monster, bro. So you so you think you thinking that Tyson could whoop Ali there? I know for a fact Tyson could have beat Ali. Cause so he, Ali, is, let's say I'm gonna I'm say Ali around around when he was fighting Joe Frazier before he went off to uh, before he went into exile. I say that Ali. This is this is how in this, his twenties. This is what I'm telling you. Mike Tyson is Joe Frazier, but faster, smarter, and probably stronger. That's what I'm and, and Joe Frazier is the person who knocked Muhammad Ali broke Muhammad Ali's fucking jaw. After he came back from being an exile all those years. It don't matter. He broke his fucking he jaw. He broke his jaw. I, I, and and everybody Ali, got their ass kicked. Ali look, look, look who uh look who uh, uh Tyson got his ass kicked by. The the people, the fighters that Tyson got his ass kicked by are not even considered like Hall of Fame boxers like that. At least uh, Joe Frazier is definitely no Lennox. Top. Lennox. George Foreman is definitely in Lennox the top. Lewis is a Hall of Famer. I no, I'm saying they are. Saying. But when you when you in, you're in the conversation of you thinking greatest fighter of all time, people that kick Tyson in ultimately in the end, none of them are in that conversation. Not saying that they're not good fighters. The only they're one, just not in the top. The only one that's not in that conversation. So a lot of people don't like Lennox Lewis because he's British, and British people have, a, especially boxers have this thing where people view them as soft and you know it's like oh my god I went to throw to that petty coach it's just that whole way they fucking talk most I don't know what he's talking about I threw to that petty coach and he talked and I hit him the way that's how they talk that's how that nigga talk man so a lot of people it's like hey man I can kick your ass and niggas don't know Lennox Lewis got a jab that Lennox Lewis used to spar Mike Tyson before uh, when Mike Tyson was champion and before niggas who knew who Lennox Lewis was Later uh, on, he Ali's far important. Yep. Who well, ultimately later on kicked Ali there. Of course, when Ali was a hundred years old, and with mustaches and shit. See, and you know what Mike Tyson did? Because again, Mike Tyson actually kicked Larry Holmes' ass because of what he did right. to Muhammad Ali, and a lot of people don't know that he did. And because uh, Tyson had a lot of respect for Ali, he did. Most people. Especially in Tyson's era, they they looked up to Ali. He was the the boxing god, yeah. and he still is considered yeah. the boxing god. But I don't think I think Ali's very smart. He's a very smart boxer. All that dancing and floating and the psychological shit and all that playing like you crazy and you know all that was a part of his game. But he could actually box and he was tough. Mm -hmm. Ali didn't get knocked down much in his career. Look how long I know. he fought. 
That's right. Tyson didn't fight as long as Ali did. Which is the thing that they both have in common is that when they were at their at their top peak, the top of their game, both of them lost three years. I don't know if you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. By, by Tyson going yeah. to jail. Yeah. So he is the same. It's really the same story. Both of them lost three years, and both of them lost what happened? that they can't get back. What happened when, when Tyson came back versus when Ali came back? Well, Tyson wasn't the same. Now, Ali probably has more discipline than Tyson. and had, had Do you understand what I'm saying? Him being, which Tyson claimed to be a Muslim, but, but Ali had more discipline, and he had more people around him. Because in the area that he came from, the motherfuckers that were around him probably were, he didn't have a Don King. He did. He got rid of Don King. Yeah, but he Don, Don was there throughout the Thriller in Manila. All the Frazier fights Don King was there for. Don King was uh, Zaire. He was. With but, George Foreman. But Ali made Don King get from around him. He did. He, I, there, there was no way Don King could manipulate. Because by the time Ali, by the time Don King comes around, Ali is already larger than life. Yep. Yeah, you see what I'm true. saying? So that's an uphill battle for, for Don King to get in the ear of Muhammad Ali. Yeah, he didn't need a Don King. His nah. name alone was going to mm -hmm. pack the stadium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don just was a good promoter to put it together. That's all. That's all. But, but, but the thing with the thing you have to, another thing you have to respect about Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson knocked out the majority of his opponents, nigga, within the first round. I'm not talking about, like, you know, niggas taking dives. I'm talking about vicious, vicious yeah. plenty. He was like George Foreman. When yeah. Foreman was coming up and Foreman was young, that's how he was. I'm not saying that I think Mike Tyson was more skilled than George Foreman. Oh, absolutely. But as far as the power and knocking him over and out, had everybody scared in the boxing arena, that was Foreman doing it. Sonny Liston did it first. Yeah, Liston was another one. The big bear. And See, Ali whooped that ass. Niggas with no necks, you don't fight niggas like that, bro. Yeah. See, Kid Dynamite, when he, I'm telling you, it's just jaw, shoulder. Jaw, shoulder. Nigga had no neck, bro. It's nothing you can really do. To fuck him up unless you're kicking him in the nuts, and that's not a legal move in boxing, bro. This, this is what I think. I, the reason why I think Ali ultimately could have kicked uh, uh, Mike Tyson's ass because I think mentally and intellectually Ali would have figured out Tyson's weakness, just like he did with George Foreman. You know, so the very fact that they're in different eras, you still kind of gotta compare them to the closest person of the era. So if you, if you take Ali there, the closest thing to a Mike Tyson of, of Ali there is probably George Foreman. You know, George Foreman didn't want to fight Mike Tyson. He actually could have fought Mike Tyson. And he, he said out of his own mouth, he didn't want to fight no, Mike he, Tyson. Yeah, no, I, I, look at how old Foreman was, too. Because the thing of it is, now don't get me wrong. He won the championship when he was that old. The thing of it is with Tyson, he, he's, this is what I think Ali would have figured out. If this crazy motherfucker hits me, <laughs> I really am going to fuck like a butterfly up out this goddamn <laughs> ring. But well, I, I think Ali would have figured out, I, he can't, I can't let him get, he can't get a good solid square hit on me. I'm done. How you going to stop him? He's just as quick as you are. Because he's going to dance. He, he's going to use the psychological thing. He's going to move around that ring. Or he's going to make him do body shots. Ali would have figured out a way. Yeah, body but the thing shot. of it is, the, the person who had the closest... Mike Tyson's killer punch. Ali would have had a reach on him too. He would have, but that's what I'm, Mike Tyson's killer punch was the same killer punch that Joe Frazier used to throw. But Mike Tyson threw it better, and it was that overhand. It was like a, yeah. it was like a hook, mm -hmm. like an overhand hook, left hook. That's why it broke out his jaw. That's what I'm talking about. See, Mike Tyson had that same punch, but it was quicker, and that motherfucker probably hit harder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely hit harder, bro. It's no way. Muhammad but but see, the thing of it is, though, Ali wasn't no bitch. He could no, take no. a beating. He wasn't, he wasn't no bitch. Because, see, the thing of it is, what, Ali, what people found out about Ali with Foreman, I mean, with, uh, with Foreman and with uh, uh, Joe Frazier, he could go the distance. Uh, Tyson never had to go the distance with nobody. Yeah, he did. But who? All his fights were short. He went the distance with Holyfield. He wants to did. He went. And what the, happened with that? He went the distance with. And uh, what happened with that fight with Holyfield? When Mike Tyson had to go the distance, he ended up on his fucking back. Yeah, he did. So that's what I'm saying. Ali could go the distance. Ali got a dance kick with with, with George Foreman. With young George Mike and with uh, uh with Frazier. See, the young Mike Tyson could go the distance, but young Mike Tyson never had to go the distance because he was knocking. But remember this out. too. Remember this. He was knocking. Keep bringing this up. 
When Joe Frazier clapped Muhammad Ali and broke that jaw, what did Ali do? He got up. He got right back up. He did. He got up. So Ali ain't no punk. So if 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 uh, fucking uh, Mike Tyson would have hit him like that, he got back. He might not have got the fast, but he got back up. Now it's like I okay. I don't think he would have got back. Up. Okay, you didn't gave me your best punch. I don't think he would. Now what? I don't. Because you know, I remember. With with uh with uh, uh Ali and Frazier, they they went twelve no they went fifteen rounds. They did, and they went the fifteen to death. They did, and it wasn't no knockout. It was like ding ding. George Foreman's the win, or or or, or uh, motherfucker in the corner had to cut shit off. See, but, but they were gonna thing. die for it. Mike Tyson is a better boxer than Joe Frazier. He's definitely a better boxer than, than uh, George Foreman. George Foreman had maybe one, just like Deontay Wilder. Had one or two punches. Your boy Joe Frazier was a good boxer, and he was a but was, he was, was Mike Tyson a better boxer than Ali? That's what I'm saying. You, Ali bring a lot to the fucking table. He, psychologically, he can fuck you up mentally. He got the people for the most part behind him. He can go the distance. He's got a firm punch too. He does. He's got length. He's got height. He's got speed. He's got finesse. He's bringing all this in a total package to the ring where Tyson's got power, he's got speed, he's got the psyche shit working for him, but can he go to distance? I honestly think, that's what I'm saying, in a fight with him, that's a fight that'll probably go about eight rounds. And I don't think, I don't think Ali could take too many of those Tyson punches, bro. I don't think he's going to take them. I don't think he would take them. I don't them. know how he's going to dodge them because he's literally just as quick as Ali. But he's he's he probably weighs more and he's more powerful. But here's the thing: it ain't just about Ali's quickness that what that made him so good. Ali's he's setting shit up too. See, Ali extend that hand as he's moving to get you to open up a spot that he's trying to get. So as soon as you go to do this, he coming in up under here. Like Ali played all that in his head. Mm -hmm. He would get you over in the corner. He lean up against the rope. He let you beat his body up a little bit. Then all of a sudden he move. Take your ass in there, bang, bang. It's like it was, it's a lot going. He was a man, like his, his mind as a boxer was is unrivaled, dude. I sat and I used to watch videos of Mike Tyson when he was training, and this is when he was with Gus Diamante. Now, of course, this is all after the fact because I was a child when Mike Tyson was rising, but the amount of work and the level of dedication that he put into in his training, I have not seen anybody, whether it be UFC, boxing, whatever be that dedicated and put that much into their training. Uh, even Muhammad Ali, I've seen a few, now again, he's from an era where they may not have as much videotape of, of that when he's training, you know, but but the work ethic of Mike, see that's another reason why I'm saying Mike over Muhammad, only because I saw his work ethic. The work ethic of, of a person like Mike Tyson, especially when he had Gus Diamante, see that's what, that's what really fucked Mike Tyson up. When Gus Diamante died, that was pretty much the end of. What's the only one? Uh, D'Angelo. What's the name? Uh, D'Angelo. Uh, Dundee. Dundee. That, hey, hey, you check right, right with Gus. Dundee's uh, got a long track oh, record. No doubt. No doubt. Both of them, they both came from good trainers. Good fucking trainers. So both of them are well crafted in, in, in what they did. But I just I will tell you a story that all really is mind blowing. When you think about it, so you know Mike Tyson was a criminal growing up, right? And he was in a um, he was in one of those reform reform schools, right? Reformatory schools, nigga. When he was like eleven or twelve years old, maybe even younger. Do you know that Muhammad Ali visited this mm -hmm. reform school? And do you know that Mike Tyson was there at the time that Muhammad Ali was there? Yeah, I've heard the story. You understand what I'm saying? Do you do you do you really that, that the irony of it. the irony, nigga, the fact that it's almost like okay, little nigga, you next, you next, and they met, and that's what actually got Mike Tyson into boxing. So in in a way, Mike Tyson is a descendant of Ali. Ali's greatness. You well, a lot of them are. A lot of them are. He was so powerful. He was so much more than just a boxer. Ali. Oh, was, absolutely. He was he was a symbol even to this day, like like uh, Ali is associated with great. Yeah, you know if you want to say the greatest of all time, the goat. What he did in his era to be as brash, 
loud yeah. as he was in the in 60s. 60s. Yeah, no doubt. The motherfucker was still hanging from trees in Louisville, Kentucky. No doubt. I mean, dude, I mean, the symbol, what he represents, the discipline he had as a Muslim, yeah. and just like the people he hung with, Malcolm X. Yeah, I know. You know, uh, Sam Cook. Mm -hmm. Sam he called Sam Cook on stage. Yeah, he did. Sam <laughs> Cook is, is the king of R&B at yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. Ali is just now the new king of uh, Fox. heavyweight Fox. boxing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They rolling with Malcolm X. I know it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. You know what? The, what yeah. they had it was a beautiful. You talk about a black renaissance, yeah. and anybody that was anybody wanted to meet Muhammad Ali. Yeah. The Beatles, they yeah. wanted to meet Muhammad Ali. The Jackson, just like Jack, whoever. And I'm, I'm so. Do you think? Do you think? At their greatest height, do you think Muhammad Ali was more popular than Mike Tyson? Oh, absolutely. You do? Hang it, damn! Yeah. Ali is more popular than Mike Tyson today. I don't know. I think everybody knows Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. If, I know one. If, by 1970, they said Muhammad Ali was the most recognizable person on the planet. Yeah. I can believe that. Cause I, I, I give that distinction only to four people, though. And three of them are named Mike. Oh, George, yeah. Yeah, Michael George, Jackson. Michael Jackson. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson is nowhere. He's yes. never been nowhere near as popular as yes. Muhammad Ali. My G. Globally. Globally, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson has never been Mike right Tyson man. stepped off a plane in Russia, and there were 200,000 people there to greet him in Russia, bro. Have you seen the footage from down here? Yeah, I get it. I get it. Do, do you understand? He, but what? How long his span was? Mm -hmm. From what Ali fought? Uh, uh, Almost thirty years. He fought a long time. Yeah, at least, at he, he fought uh, Sonny Liston. Won the title in nineteen sixty-four. Yeah, nineteen sixty-three and nineteen sixty-four. And his he, last fight was in the eighties. In the eighties. No doubt. So look how many people, look how many times across the globe mm -hmm. over that he didn't been, how many people he didn't met, just you, people that didn't grew up that were yeah. kids, he yeah. still, it's kind of like a Michael Jackson effect. You but Mike, grew up with him watching him as a kid, and then even now you're grown and you still listen to his music. But Mike Tyson, see that's what I mean, when you're talking about the epitome of black masculinity and black manhood, but not just, see Ali was that too, but Ali was the it was more it was more acceptable. It wasn't it wasn't quite It had as, more purpose and meaning okay. behind what he was what he was talking about. I know, but Mike Tyson shit was more visceral. It was more I don't want to use the word savage, but it, it was, was more, more rebellious. You understand what I'm saying? Which Ali was rebellious too, but like you say, Mike Tyson was a younger it was, he's a descendant of Ali. Yeah. So if yeah. Ali was here with it, Tyson quite naturally gonna be right here with it. Just like if you're here your son is going to be yeah. right here. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. There yeah, you go. It, it, it's kind of like that. He came even harder, yeah. even more bold, even more unapologetic. More unapologetic. That's what it was. See, and see, white people, I don't think they necessarily feared Muhammad Ali in the same sense that they feared. Oh, no, here. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't think people feared Ali. I don't think yeah. boxers feared him at all. Most people, most, unless, yeah, like you said, the only ones that might have is people that might have to get in the ring. I'm trying to do the fucking opposite of them. But yeah, I don't think, he was not known as a feared fighter. Mm. See, Mike Tyson, that's what I mean. As far as, like that, that, how they like to portray black men, black people and black men in particular, as savages and as like an uncontrollable beast. That was Mike Tyson. That's Mike Tyson, nigga. But he's doing it. He's doing it. He's not doing it in a way where it's like, oh, ooga booga, or you know, like like that. It's like literally, this nigga is a force of nature. And again, because the psychological aspects of what he's doing, because he's actually good at his art, and he's knocking niggas the fuck out in the first round. He's you not seen that video of that nigga. He's not laughing and smiling with white people for no unnecessary you reason. Seen that video footage that he's recently put out of him Which one? practicing That's at the house when he was like in the steel guys and he, he was doing his feet work. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I'm telling you, bro. Still was fucking that motherfucker. Bad niggas a month. Like <laughs> I don't know if you remember the dude who um, tried to have words with him on the street. Tried to he didn't try to rob him. It was the dude who talked crazy to him. So, you don't remember this shit? And he hit this nigga, this nigga whole, all this shit was like this. 
You don't remember this nigga? No. Some random New York nigga, bro. Called him a faggot or called him something, bro. And when I say Mike, Mike, you gotta remember this because he tried to sue Mike Tyson behind this shit. His whole shit was swole for like six months, bro. That's a hard hit motherfucker. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Dude, that's a hard hit motherfucker, man. Nigga. You know, that's why I say I'll give you that savage wise fighter, just street brawler. Now, with Mike Tyson, Kick Ali's ass in the alley. Fucking right. He beat the shit out of Ali in the alley. Like in the Tyson, street. Mike like Tyson had a video game. He did. That's, I, that's, Ali was on that. It just didn't give him credit. Do that saying. nigga on uh, Mike Tyson punch out that looked just like uh, Ali, but they didn't call him Ali. Uh, what was his fucking name? The black dude looked just like Muhammad Ali. Really? He knew that's who it was. Oh, Mike Tyson punch out? Yes, but they didn't want to give him the name. They didn't want to call him Muhammad Ali. Well, it's only right if he was. He, he was on there. It was only, it's only just right a little he was. Afro thing. Not Afro, but you know, yeah, a little flat out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flat top, Afro thing, white trunks, everything. Motherfuckers be on there doing all this shit. We like this island. <laughs> you know what? I do kind of remember yeah, it like that. Dude on there, you do. I can't think of that. I'm going to have to look it up and see what his uh, uh, name was. But if he, he had a name. That I'm just saying, that speaks to the power, though, of Mike Tyson, too. Cause nigga, that's a Japanese made video game, and yeah. my nigga, it, it was called Mike Tyson Punch Out. No, it definitely was his game, but I mean, you gotta figure too. That was in the era of all this stuff. Hulk Hogan had fucking games and toys and all that. White boy. Okay. White boy. Fucking what other? Uh... It's not no other nigga that's in the <laughs> game. That's what I'm saying. No, Jordan, uh, Jordan had a video game. Other than that, Magic, who? Magic versus Bird. They was on video game. Okay, but he had Bird with him. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no, I'm not trying to take away from the popularity. Oh, in the nineties, growing up, Mike Tyson was the man. There was no that's, other. That's what I'm saying. That's down. all I'm saying. Like you knew what time it was. You remember when Mike used to, when used to pay pay per view, and you uh you would you know Mike Tyson gonna fight. He would come out, and you would say, "Shit, hold on, man. Let me go get some dip for these chips. Yeah. I'll be right back." Yeah. You go get. The Dip yeah. and the niggas already on the fucking canvas before you can get the kitchen's right here. Yeah, I know. Mike did knock his ass out of the room. Oh, that's all you, that's all you heard in the room. Kitchen, yeah. And you done paid fucking forty dollars for this fight. Mike can just fucking walk out the stadium with twenty million dollars in thirty fucking seconds. Never yeah, seen Muhammad Ali do that. But you know, old school motherfuckers and true fighters, they hated that shit, but like the older guys, like my dad and this, they hated it. Mike Tyson for that reason, because they figured they didn't get a fight, and they always looked at it like, now us younger niggas, we like, Tyson knocked that nigga out, <laughs> hell you know, you know, we looked at it that way, but the old school, they, you gotta figure where they came from, they saw fights, it was 12 round, 15 round fights. That just speaks to the power of Mike Tyson, there's never been nobody you, like You know what I think too? There's never been look, nobody look, like Look at the fighters of that era, like I had to fight some motherfuckers. Especially throughout his whole span. In the testament of Ali, he fought some of the same people. Ali had maybe four fighters, maybe five, that I will say were excellent fighters. He had to fight Floyd Patterson. A lot of people forget about Floyd. Floyd was the man. Yes. At first. He was the fucking man. He was the man at first. He had to fight Floyd Patterson. He had to fight Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston. He had to fight Joe Frazier. George Foreman. George Foreman. And who else you want to see? That say? crazy uh, white boy. That, I uh, know you're about. Yeah, I that, 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 he, I think he knocked Ali down. He did. I know you're talking about. He knocked about. him down. Ali was taking him for a joke. That was like in the 60s that he fought that white boy. Yeah, yeah I think he was talking about all his comeback. Yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about. I know you're talking about. He was about. taking him uh, serious. But, uh, but yeah, Ali. Jack something. What's his name? Jack? I can't remember that white boy. He, he was real sloppy, sweating all, yeah, all over the yeah, place. Big, yeah. and, and you gotta look at the yeah. ass whooping that Ali put on Ford Pass. The baddest Ford yeah, Pass was. He did. Was he the one that say my name? Was that Florida or. Uh, I think that was. Uh, if, if it wasn't Floyd, it was Joe. Wasn't that Joe? No, no, he didn't do that, Joe Frazier. No, he was telling Joe Frazier I'm God. Yeah. You know, he's, he's Islam. Yeah. He's like, I'm Allah, I'm God. And I want to say, Floyd, say God get Floyd back Patterson that refused to call him Muhammad Ali. He kept calling him Clay. I could be wrong, but with Floyd Patterson, it was another black, it was a black boxer. And he refused to call him Muhammad Ali. He was out of Patterson and listening. 
Yeah. But see, at the time, listen, he was Clay then. Yeah. So he didn't become Muhammad Ali until after he woke Sonny Liston's ass. I thought he fought Patterson before this. Then. Nah, that was later. That was later? Okay. Yeah, that was later. He, Liston was his first heavyweight bout yeah, yeah, yeah. in uh, Miami. And uh, he, he whooped that ass the first time, came back, did it again the second time. Listen and and, and Liston cheated yeah. in the fight. So, and Ali still won, fought him blind until his, his vision came back. This ain't want none of that. No, nah, he didn't want, he wasn't ready, man. He was the bear. That's what, that was his name, the, the, the bear. He's a hard-hitting motherfucker. He was a hard-hitting motherfucker, but he wasn't used to, like Tyson, he wasn't used to going the distance. And once he couldn't knock Ali out or lay him down, it was like he was getting tired. Same thing with Foreman. Foreman was going through knocking everybody yeah, out. Foreman. everything. Foreman had some fear, dude. He did. He had some fear in but the body. Foreman world. and Liston were nowhere. They, like, no, they weren't. The shape that Tyson was in. That's what I'm telling you. Go, you go. What are telling me? Joe, uh, George Foreman wasn't in shape in no. his day? No, no, no. Not like Mike Tyson. Dude, you ever seen footage no. of George Foreman training right here in Fifth Ward, Texas? I've seen. I've seen some. George Foreman wasn't no punk, man. I'm he, not saying. I'm not he saying. was feared. He was an Olympic and boxer. And he rightfully so was feared. He was feared. He had shook. He knocked Joe Frazier up and down know, fucking like four times. He did. Killing niggas. The same fear that Tyson projected in the 90s, that was George Foreman in the 60s and 70s. He, but the, the type of shape that, that Mike Tyson was in, the type of training regiment that Mike Tyson was doing, I'm telling you, it, the only person you can compare it to is a Michael Jordan or a Kobe Bryant. That's it. The only Maybe maybe a Muhammad Ali, because the one thing about Ali and that's why he was hard to knock out. That motherfucker would get up and just run like a gazelle all day, five, six miles daily, just Damn. running, just running. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing. A jump and roll. And he you, was you're not gonna knock the nigga like he I was that spiritually out. connected too. Yeah, he was. You know that played a big part because Ali really believed like I'm. This is I'm. This is destiny. Yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to be right where I'm at. I'm supposed to be a winner. I am the. He believed that I am the greatest shit. And see, the timing of it was so perfect with Ali because you had the Black Power movement going on, you had the Civil Rights movement going on. Like you said, Sam Cooke, the King of R and B, and Malcolm X walking around too, nigga. Elijah Muhammad, like it, it's that that I could I couldn't even imagine what that felt like, nigga, to be the heavyweight champion of the world at that particular point in time. Everybody fucking with you. Yeah. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Like you, you're a threat. The FBI is watching you because you're just that powerful. And you gotta remember too. Back then, the heavyweight champion of the world meant a lot more than it did in the '90s or even today. You know, Definitely. the heavyweight yeah. champion of the world means shit. Now, back then, yeah. that was a, a like when we like when you're the Super Bowl champ. That's what it was kind of like mm -hmm. back then with boxing. Cause you know boxing. Hey back champ, then, what's going on, champ? Yeah, it was, it was champ, mm -hmm. champ, champ. Everything was champ. Cause like back then, football and basketball well, shit. really hadn't. Nah, well, football was close, but basketball sure wasn't there. Yeah, basketball was trash. It, it, it was nowhere like that. So, I mean, I give you this. We'll, we'll wrap up on this one. In a street fight, in an alley fight, yeah, I give you Tyson probably whoop Ali's ass. But in a boxing ring, professionally. Having to go 12 or 15 rounds, Muhammad Ali go whoop Mike Tyson's ass. Ooh, I don't know, man. I, I don't think Tyson can that. go the distance. I can't say that. My man, if, if Mike Tyson had 60 fights, probably 58 of them was knockouts. But who has he went the distance with and won? I That's know my thing. He went the distance with Evander Holyfield. He bit his ear off and all this old shit. That Evander Holyfield was doing some sneaky underhand. He was. Bullshit. He was headbutting. He was headbutting he the shit out of that nigga, man. And he got a big ass, bolder head, nigga. How, how long did uh, him and Reddick Bow go? That went about eight or nine rounds. Almost ten. It may have been ten rounds. That went a while. Reddick Bow, you talking about the nigga who actually knocked him? Oh, like, Buster Douglas. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. You talking about Buster Douglas. Reddick Bow was another big mean yeah, black big ass. But I, mean, I don't, I don't Douglas, they won about eight nine rounds. And see, and Tyson was on the canvas. He wasn't trained. He didn't really even train for that. Kind of like when Joe Frazier got Ali. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You excused it when Ali got shot okay, that time. But did I did did. Did uh, uh Ali was training. He, he just had been hey, in the fight. Did did, did fucking Mike Tyson get up off the ground 
Like not only did it, after getting knocked out. Did you see the fucking punch that busted that? Did you see the fucking punch Joe Frazier put on Ali broke his jaw? Come on now, Ali. Niggas back then, that sixties niggas. They were young niggas. They were young niggas then. I think they were still. I think during those fights, they was what maybe late twenties, maybe early thirties. I'm gonna tell you what was called too about them back in the day. Um, you know, they used to fight like 12 fights, you know, 5, 10, you know, 8 fights or more in a year, nigga. Right. They was fighting like every other month. Fighters today, and even in Tyson era, you may get 4 or 5 fights a year. Maybe maybe 3, if that. And the payday was nowhere near like oh, they were in Tyson's age. Ali, he came in, he elevated the pay. Yeah, from where it was that Tyson came in, of course, and shot it through the roof. That's who, well, we, this shit that, uh, what's the name, uh, Floyd Mayweather doing? Yeah. Tyson created all that. He just, Floyd just took it over Showtime. Yeah. But Tyson, the one with HBO. What you think, I know this ain't got, what you think of Floyd? You like Floyd? I like Floyd. I mean, it's hard not to like Floyd, because Floyd, he's a winner on so many different levels, dude. That's what I like about Floyd. Floyd is a crafty thinker when it comes to boxing. A lot of people don't like that old shoulder move. Yeah, defense, yeah. But yeah, hey, yeah. that's his defense. That's the way he boxes. He ain't doing nothing illegal. Yeah. He can go the distance. Yeah. He has went the distance. He don't really get hit. He don't really get hit. Mm -hmm. He ain't all beat up. He ain't stupid. As far as when he's talking, he can articulate himself. If you give him a chance, <laughs> not going be cutting him off. Yeah. And he, they just they just hate him because he's young, With he's that rich, yeah, and he's out the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, that's what they don't like about Floyd. He got out the way. He's Floyd came me in like a stick-up. Give me the way. money. He got out the way. Give me the money. I did what you asked me to do. Give me the money, and I'm out of here. Now, he got money stacked up to the ceiling. He's cocky. He's arrogant. And he deserves right it. He so. backed it right up. Right so. Yeah, right for He so. backed that shit up. White boy can be cocky and arrogant. And, oh, he's okay. And, you know, but a nigga. Because the Ali was cocky and arrogant. And they hated his ass. For one. They really got their ass kicked, and they took a punishment back then. Yeah, they did. You know, even in Mike's era, you know, they took a punishment. They got the money, but they took a beating, and they got fucked up. Floyd came in the game with smart. Like, I'm here for a purpose. You, you, the women, these promoters, all this all shit, shit not about to take yeah. me off the mark. I'm focused. I got to get this money, and I'm going to retire at a young age. See, and again, he is a, he is a descendant of... Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson, where he's able to see the mistakes that Muhammad Ali made. He's able to see the mistakes that Mike Tyson made. Learn from them, adapt, and again, see, when they when they hate motherfuckers, that's another thing, because they hate LeBron like that, too. Yeah, they do. When they hate motherfuckers. Another winner. You understand what I'm saying? Another fucking winner. When they hate motherfuckers like that, it's, it's, it's mainly because the mistakes and the shortcomings. They can't trip them up like they did the ones that came before. Them like them, exactly. Like the motherfuckers that did, like they did, that came before. They can't get them with that shit because they're students of the game. They're students of right. these same people that you messed over and fucked over. And yeah, nigga, they not finna fall for the okie doke, bro. LeBron is going to walk away from the NBA. He, he, he watched what Michael Jordan did mm -hmm. and, and, and Magic Johnson. But he's going to walk away younger. Yep. Probably Richard. more successful. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because I think eventually, business-wise, LeBron's going to overtake Michael. Oh, absolutely. Business-wise. The nigga, see, Michael... And that's saying a lot, because Michael, Mike, Mike Joy got a lot of money. But see, the thing about... Michael had to stay loyal to interests that maybe not... That only really fucked with him because of who he is. LeBron knows that he is a whole... What's that word? He's, generation. Well, he's a generation, but he's like a whole... He's a whole, he has a, not a following, but he's a, um, he, not a, like an icon, but he has his own, um, I can't think of the fucking word, man. But he's like his own status. He's his own. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. His, you know, he you has know his mean? own brand. Baby. There you go. He's his own fucking brand. Yeah, he's his own and brand. And he, know, he recognizes that. Right. He don't need Nike. He None don't need Reebok. LeBron, the man. Yes. Right. Yeah, stands alone. Kind of like Ali. Yeah. Ali's his own brand. He's yeah. not connected. And that's what Jordan Jordan didn't recognize it till later when he mm -hmm. branched off and got and he probably had to fight them to get the Jordan, Jordan. brand. Jordan. But he was connected more to Nike. 
yes. connected to Gatorade. Yes. He's connected to their world of hey, fun. Underwear, all that. Yeah. See, they they making money off of who they are because that's the power of social media. Mm-hmm. Because you can get you know Jordan and all them and they 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 were shying away from the camera yes. if it wasn't in a professional setting. Like mm-hmm. okay, I gotta talk to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you rolling up on them at the house and you ain't never seen no nah. video of Jordan at Just the house. Relaxing at the no. Nah. Unless it was there. Yeah. All right. Action. Hey, little man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cut. Yeah. Little motherfucker out here. <laughs> but, but again, those are the benefits of him being, LeBron being able to see those who came before him and see what they did right and see what they did wrong. And it's like, yeah, nigga, guess what? White boy, you may control all the chess pieces on the board, but nigga, I know what, I, I'm, the, I'm the queen. You know, not to say, you know, like, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying as far as being able to move any which way. At this particular point in time, I have all the leverage. You need me. Right. And I don't more need people, you. You need more me. More people looked at it the way LeBron does, the way that, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, wasn't that May- uh, Mayweather does. Yeah. See, they come in there mm-hmm. and they realize, like we talked about it in one of our other previous episodes, they realize that I'm the prize. I'm the prize. Hey, reporter. Hey, ESPN. Hey, HBO. Hey, you Showtime. got a job because You of can't me. get in this ring and kick nobody no. ass. Ain't nobody paying to see you cornball yeah. like a motherfucking Stephen A. Smith. Yeah. You, 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 you have no story without, without me to tell it. Mm-hmm. And without as me. soon as more people realize that, that, hey, Nike, I make you a shoe. Jordan made the Nike yeah. shoe. See, and the cold part about it, you see, because that's why they hate these guys with such vitriol, but LeBron James ain't never been in no trouble. Nope. He's married. All of that shit that you want people to do. That and you use as an excuse when it's not there. Do you see what I'm saying? He has all of that. But you still have a way to knock this man? Yeah. He's raising his family. He's with his woman. He has a, he has a, you know, he does nice things for the community. And you still find a way to shit on this dude? Well, it's even sadder. How do you even get your own community to turn against LeBron? As a black man. What has LeBron done to make you not fuck with him, not respect him on some type of level? I don't know. I, same thing with uh, Floyd. Yeah. What has Floyd Mayweather done that he doesn't deserve to respect? Say he's not your favorite boxer. Yeah, that's fine. Say you don't like his style of boxing. That's, that's fine. fine. Mm-hmm. But as a black man in America, I you should give him respect yeah. for what he's accomplished, not. for where they came from, no doubt. to where they're at. Like, you ought to give him respect and nothing else just for you that. Have to. That's hard to do. Dude sitting at home with no job, playing video games, <laughs> critiquing these multi-millionaires. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, because again, every, and see that's what I mean about people not being able to look at the long picture, the, the big picture. It's like, you got, in every instance, you don't think motherfuckers is trying to trip Floyd Mayweather up? You don't think in every instance Still they're trying, trying to. to trip up LeBron James and these great motherfuckers who are here? Like, and, but at every fucking turn, you got motherfuckers that's rooting against them and, and, and pitted against them. And these are not just regular sorry motherfuckers like you say you're sitting around playing video games. These are other motherfuckers with power, nigga. That could that could use that power to fuck him over. And he knows that. So for him to avoid those potholes and for him to avoid that shit, like you say, as a as a black person or even just as a regular human, how can you not respect that, bro? What's, what's, what, what's happening here is I can see a little bit of it coming about, but like when you talk about the Ali's, you talk about the, uh, you know, the, the, the guys that like to say they're individuals, they're a brand of their yeah, own, they know, right. but they were, they were more socially conscious. Like yeah. Ali was very socially conscious. Yes, indeed. He gave That's a true. damn about his people. Right. And, and as a black man, like, okay, y'all, I'm not broke. I'm not living in the hood. I'm not having these problems that y'all have, but I give a damn. Yeah. Because I, I once did. I know where you at. That's what I like about Floyd. I like about LeBron especially. Even some of the rappers like T.I. and uh Well you know you know who kinda of ushered that era in? Who? Oh. It was Jordan. Jordan? Yeah, and you can, to a certain extent, maybe Magic Johnson, but, you know, when you when you look at the athletes of the 60s, like you say, you know, Muhammad Will Ali, Chambers, your Will Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, see, all of them, Jim they Brown. gave a damn about Jim Brown, yes, you know what I'm saying? They gave a damn about yes, their people and where they came from. And they, and they told you that, you know, it didn't matter, yeah, you may cheer for me as a Cleveland Brown, 
you may cheer for me as a movie star. Yeah, the, uh, Milwaukee Buck, because that's where your boy Jabbar came from. Yeah, Milwaukee. You, you may cheer for me as all of that, but I make no. It's no, I'm not. It's unapologetically black shit. Yeah. That I'm rocking with. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, I'm not finna call you a cracker or none of that, but don't get it twisted about where my allegiances lie and what I'm trying to do for my people. See, somewhere, see, the only the only person that I can attribute it to, because even even Magic Johnson, he came in at a point in time when niggas still really wasn't getting paid like that. Right. You understand what I'm saying? The first motherfucker that I know that was getting paid with shoe contracts was well, Magic. No, it was Jordan. I don't think Magic Ma- had Magic, well, Magic had a shoe. He did? With Magic Converse. Had a shoe? Are you serious? He had a shoe with Converse. Yep, it was the LA Colors. He had a shoe with uh, Converse. Hmm. He was on a video game. Yeah, he was. Magic Magic was the first to, as an entrepreneur, branch out as a brand and, and, and as himself to say, hey, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. This is what I can do outside of basketball. I'm also intellectually smart. I can start this, I can do this, I can invest, and he started doing You know, he did start a lot of shit out of basketball. Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, movie well, did, 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 Magic Johnson, movie did, 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 Starbucks, all that shit. What Jordan did, Jordan kind of picked up almost like where OJ left off. Yeah, there you go. This commercial, there you go. lovable guy endorsing everything. Me. I'm he, black, but I'm not really black. Right, like, I'm, I'm, I'm an icon. I'm OJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't put me... I'm not the people's champ of black people. I'm not the, I'm Jordan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm everybody. And and that's fine. You know, you can't really knock Jordan for that. Just like with OJ, OJ took it a little bit too far. I'm, you know, I'm OJ. Like, no, nah, motherfucker. You a nigga. So you got to remember, OJ could have been doing what Jim Brown was doing. They came to OJ Simpson. Mm-hmm. OJ Simpson said that's where you get that statement from. All that, I'm not black, I'm OJ. See, he was on that shit. When niggas were still hanging from trees, getting their ass kicked, all these injustices were going on. You were OJ Simpson. You you could have done something. You could have made a difference. But he looked the other way for the sake of money. Not only did he do that, he went out and started marrying white women and shit. Yeah. Left his black woman and his black kids. Yeah, I remember that. That motherfucker. And went and lived the American dream with with a white woman. Well, we all know how that ended up for him. (laughs) And that's what's crazy about it. What did Jordan do at the end of the day? Same thing. You see what I'm saying? That's why he's an extension of more of the O.J. Simpson. LeBron is more of an extension of Magic. Yeah. More of a Jim Magic, Brown. Magic still with him. Ali. With cookie. Yeah, you're right. yeah, he's still with Cookie. Even fucking yes, A. I know. Who still. <laughs> who, what? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> who staying with you after A? Nigga. Most of them leave you behind Chlamydia. Oh my God. A. And she's still there today? Nigga, AIDS in the 90s, nigga. And 1990 magic. AIDS, nigga. Right, when, when the medicine wasn't even You see what I'm no saying? Cure. No cure. Bro, niggas didn't even want to hoop with you no more. You had to you had to retire, nigga. Because niggas ain't want to yep. hoop. So that's what I want to see yeah. more of. No, I want to no. see more of the, you know, don't no, That's real shit, James. Yeah, that's don't, don't shit. get to the mountain when you standing up there. You made it. Now you looking down at your people like, Pull yourself up. Yeah, no. I did it. But like, hey, you know, that's why I like about LeBron. He reaches back. He gives back. He builds schools. He do shit. He, does. he, does. he gives a damn about the people back just like Ali did. Yeah. See, that era of, a, of a entertainers and athletes, that's what needs to come back. Because you can't get to the, you can't buy off into the bullshit that they take. Well, it's not like it used to be. Black people have made so much progress. They made a little progress. This is so much, it's so much further to go. I'm going to tell you something else. The success level that you have can be taken away from you at the drop of a dime because you're the only one there. You're the only one there. Now, if it was a group of motherfuckers, Look at Bill there, Cosby. you're the only one there. You see what you see? What I'm saying? Now, maybe if you had this guy with you, you kind of see what I'm saying. Kevin Hart with you, maybe they can ride with you. That's what I mean, bro. So see, this is what I love about it. this is a beautiful moment in time when they tried to lock Ali up for refusing to go to Vietnam. People went to bat for him. His people Jim Brown was at the table with him. Mm-hmm. Kareem Abdul Jabbar was at the mm-hmm. table with him. All these athletes and all these people were there with him. Supporting him. To support him, saying, God damn it. Even, even Joe uh, Frazier. Joe Frazier. We call the ugly gorilla. They was there. <laughs> was there for Unified. Yeah. You think you see some shit like that today? 
Has anybody unified for R. Kelly? Right or wrong? No. Nah, right. You know, has anybody unified for Bill Cosby? Like outrage these celebrities. Nah, they don't. This is what I'm talking about. They people, don't even. They don't. All these people that benefit off of these people's careers. Now here's the thing with R. Kelly. You can at least stand with him to make sure. You stand. Next say, next hey, this all. is still my brother. Yeah. My brother has a problem. My brother's sick. Whatever. We don't know, but we're gonna stand with him and make sure y'all don't violate his constitutional rights. There you go. That's all you got. That's do. all you gotta do. You're not standing with him and saying he's innocent. And y'all, no, you can just saying, give him a fair day in court. There you go. If he's guilty and he did all the things y'all said, then it should be easy for y'all to prove. There you go. But don't take it. Don't lock him up right now with no evidence. There you go. Yeah. Like Bill Cosby, no. don't lock him up without no, no evidence. Don't, don't just take you. away his freedom and his rights because one day that could be you. Yeah. But everybody looking the other way. You know, Bill shouldn't have done this. Yeah. You know, everybody been doing our kids the dance. Everybody make mistakes. Everybody fall. But... Just don't make sure they don't take these people constitutional right. It, it's, it's a travesty what they did to uh, Bill and, and Kelly. But when they was at the top of their game, everybody in the video. I know. Everybody want to be on the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. He's the greatest. He's yeah, the he's, awesome. He's he's same, these same little bros that's running around talking about R. Kelly peed on me and boo-booed on me. They was right there in this corner, nigga, up until about a week ago. You know what I mean? Yep. So the only reason you switch sides is not out of Oh, you woke up and smelled the fucking roses. No, bitch. You see, the whole world came in on him now. Do you see what I'm saying? Everybody throwing rocks That's there. it. It's easy to hate them now. Everybody, the majority is. Oh, they, they throwing rocks or shit. Let me pick up a big ass rock and throw it at this nigga. Because in 2008, it takes no courage to do that. No courage. When at it was all. like in the middle, where it was just a small group of people saying, yeah, he did it. But the majority was stepping in the name of love. <laughs> Nobody was <laughs> trying to hear that shit. You're right, you bro. They deserved it. You didn't bother back to like Kelly. I'm just saying, I just think about him. I think about Cosby. Yeah. I just, I just think as, as black entertainers, black athletes, if you get the bag and you get the notoriety, do something worthwhile no. with it. Don't think you untouchable. No. Don't turn the blind eye no. like, See what's going on, black issues, and what's going on with black they people. They got nothing to they do with it. Because eventually they're going to come for y'all. They're going to come for you. They don't need the support. Look at Oprah now. You see what I mean? You, you can almost see it coming. It's coming. It's getting closer and closer. She's going to fuck up. It's coming. So I'm gonna, she going to do I fuck. I saw some shit where they exposed and tear her ass up. I saw some shit where they was like the bitch had molested some, some kids or something. You know what I'm saying? It, it ended up being a false story. But right. Like, that's what I mean. It, it's like, yeah, your, your time is running it's out. close. Too. Your time is running out too. Cause, and what happened? And the first thing she gonna want to do, she gonna want black people yeah. to rally behind her mm -hmm. and protect her. Oh no doubt. And yeah. we we ain't doing. We looking the other way, just like you, you doing. Just because you because you sold this out so long ago, and you did things. And that's one thing. Okay, get your paper. I'm not mad at you getting your paper, but come back, like you say, reach back, do something that people can see and say, oh shit. You know what? Even though I may not agree with this that she did, that shit right there, I can't knock that. And the other thing, make black cool. There you go. That that's the thing too. When you get up there, be who you are. That's what they like about Floyd too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Floyd and is a brother. black man. I don't care how rich he is, Makes no what problem. podium, what stage, how how high you elevate him. At the end of the day, he is still a black man. He do nigga shit. And he's gonna show you that. He's gonna show you that at the end of the day. Like, I can't sell out my hair because it's like if I got rich tomorrow and I'm, I'm popular, I'm famous, I'm rich. Does that mean I stop drinking this yeah. or drinking Crown Royal? Mm -hmm. No, I like Crown Royal. I, I, I've always drank. I like Crown Royal and I like Black and Miles, nigga. Yeah, so does that, you know, ah, oh, yeah, like he all on TV looking like a nigga with Crown Royal and Black and Miles. Yeah, so what? So what? Who says that that's nigga? Who says that's wrong? wrong? Ain't, nothing, exactly so, ain't nothing wrong with that. But it's cool for me to get my black hair on TV with a champagne bottle and, and putting on this, this whole Fake show. Fake shit that i never done before. Shit i never done before. Mm -hmm. I don't know nothing about. Facts. You know, some little white man just told me about caviar, so now I'm, a, I'm an expert on caviar. <laughs> Ain't that an expert? <laughs> yeah, I'm an expert on it. And, then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get on TV or I'm going to get on IG Live and say, see y'all niggas out there, y'all don't know nothing about this caviar shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got damn right. You want to start on your people. You got that. That shit and got to stop. Hey, look, another episode down. Episode two versus, man. All right? What's up?